I've had quite a few people ask me, Steve, how can I get a better black and white scan on a scanner like an Epson V750 or V850 Pro? And it's really simple, simple is the key word. And I'm gonna showcase today two examples, one using Silverfast and one using the Scan2 uh, software that comes with the Epson scanner. Both of these can produce very great quality black and white scans, but it's different than your color scanning workflow. Black and white film is more complicated to scan than color film because we use a variety of different developers. When you're working with color negative material, you're working with C41. It's a universal developer for all color film. When you're working with E6, all E6 is the same. ECN2 is the same. But for example, the film that I have on the screen here, this is the Ferrania Orto that I just did the extensive review on. And I process this film in over five different developers. You can process it in probably 65 different developers, and each one is gonna give you a slightly different negative with a different base fog, with a different uh, gradation of tonality, with a different highlight compression and, and rendering. So that's the reason why black and white film requires a little bit more effort, but it's minimal. And once you've got it dialed in, as long as you don't change your developer, it's the same for the most part every single time. What you're looking for from a black and white scan is something that is a little flat, a little controlled, and shows all creative possibilities. And then in Photoshop, it's very easy in just one or two steps, which I will show, to make an image look just amazing. Okay, so here is the negative that's on my Epson V750 Pro, and I'm running Silverfast AI Studio. This particular uh, negative was the Frania Orto shot at box speed 50 and processed in DDX 1 to 5. If you have not watched my review of this amazing new film, I'll put a link in the description. Okay, so my basic settings over here, I've got negative selected 16-bit because I want the maximum quality in black and white. Uh, I always scan on an Epson V750 at a maximum of 2400. 2400 is really as much as you're going to get out of this particular scanner. Um, anything beyond that, you actually start losing quality. And I would rather scan it at 2400 and upsample the file to what I need. So instead of having something of lesser quality. So the next thing I do is make sure that all of your scratch and dust removal and all that stuff is turned off. You cannot use those techniques on black and white material. Um, next thing I do is I go to the pipette right here. I click on the pipette and I hit black point. I take it right here to the area between the frames. This is base, uh, film base plus fog. I click on that. Immediately you can see how much better the overall image looks. It has a much better tone just by setting that black point in between the two. This is very similar to how when we used to make contact sheets, you always wanted to make contact sheets to where you could just make out the perforation or the edges of the film. That looks pretty good. If I scroll down here, I always set it to monochrome. I find that for black and white material, I get the best quality if I set the ISO ASA to monochrome. I don't turn on CCR at all. I leave all of that as neutral. Next thing that I want to look at is my gradation. Um, I'm a big advocate on a scanner like a V750 Pro of doing an inverted S-curve. So all I do, because I've set my black point, is come in right here at the middle and just start to pull it down a little bit. And then here a little higher up, a little bit more, and then here just a little bit more. And then I try to smooth that out so it looks really nice. What you can see is I've brought the highlight values into play, but yet the shadow tones are still where they should be. So what you can see here on the histogram is everything's contained from end to end. I have my black, I have my white, and it's a really massive, expansive dynamic range. And I want my images to look a little bright like this when I do the scan without losing detail. That's because the maximum amount of data and bit depth is contained in the highlight portion of a scan and not in the shadow. So this is going to give me a really clean scan. So when it comes to sharpening the film, for high-speed films, I generally speaking would do auto less sharpening minus, so it's even more. That'd be for like 400-speed films. For films as fine-grained as Ortro and P30, I would just go to auto less sharpen. You have to correct for a little bit of the loss of the sharpening that's going to happen from the analog to digital conversion. But with black and white material, it's a tricky threshold because at a certain point, all you're doing is emphasizing grain. So I've got everything set up and I'm going to hit scan. Open the file in Photoshop and what you can see is that everything's there. 
all the shadow detail, all the highlight detail. It's just the image is a little bit bright. So all I have to do is go over to uh, Image Adjustment Levels, and I open my Levels palette up. First thing I want to do is make sure my black is correct. So if I look at the black, you can see I want to bring it down to somewhere where I start to see a little black in the frame, something like that. On a Mac, I'm holding the Option key in order to see that. That starts to get the black point closer to what it should be. Then I'm looking at the highlight values. You can see nothing is clipped. And then I'm just going to pull that mid-tone slider down just a little tiny bit, something about like there. That looks pretty good in terms of global adjustments. All I've literally done is make sure the black point is good. Look at the detail in the highlights. It's all still there. Nothing's been lost. Um, and at this point, I would go in and do my standard Photoshop uh, workflow. Look at how good the image looks with very little to no effort. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to do the exact same technique using the standard scanning software that comes with Epson with your scanner. The Scan2, this is the standard scanning software that comes with the Epson V750. I believe it's also the standard one that comes with the V850 Pro. And all I've done is I have it set up for photo mode, transparency unit, black and white negative film, 16-bit grayscale, once again, 2400 DPI, and then scanning quality, high. And this is my preview scan right here that I've got. And you can see the highlights are clipping up a little bit. So we have to now go in and adjust this. I do not ever click auto. So all I do now is click on advanced settings. I want unsharp mass to be set to low, color restoration off, backlight off, dust removal off, grain reduction off. But then I click on detail adjustments and what I'm interested in first is the histogram adjustment right here. What I'm going to do is grab that black point right here, the lower setting and the eyedropper. And once again, I'm going to go in between the frames and hit on that base plus fog area. Next thing that I want to do is I want to come to the output here and I want it to go all the way. I want it to go from 0 to 255. Then here I'm looking at the highlight portion. And I'm going to pull this across until right about where I see it line up with the edge right there, right about there. And you can see it darkened the image quite a bit, but look at how well the highlight's been contained. I'll take my mid-tone slider a little bit and open the overall file up to get something that looks like this, something that's long and gray, has full shadow detail and full highlight detail. And in terms of the curve, I leave the tone curves to normal. Um, then I go to Tone Correction. And here, if you remember, in the silver fast, we did an inverted S-curve, but because of the way Epson has this set up, we actually need to do an actual S-curve and not an inverted S-curve. But we're going to do a gentle one. So somewhere down here, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit, about like that. And then up here, I'm going to raise this up just a little bit, about like that. And what I'm looking at is looking at the highlight contrast here, looking at the shadows, and just going, okay, what feels about right to my eye? Now, I would rather go not enough in terms of setting this contrast than go too high. With the settings that I've just done, I'm not clipping any highlights. The shadows in here are set to the proper uh, 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 density. I've got my output going the entire way. Everything here looks great. I close this window and I hit scan. All right, so here we are with the Epson scan uh, using Epson's uh, scanning software. So once again, in this file, all I would do is come back into my levels and I'm checking my black point. I want to bring that up just a hair. I'm looking at my whites. You can see I safe sided them. They're good. I'm going to bring up the mids just a whisker like that. Um, I'm going to come in and maybe do a small curve like I did before. But it's really more one, I'm going to drop the black just a whisker, and it's really more one for the midtones and highlights, where I want to bring those values up, and everything is there. But I hope this provides some insight on how to make really great black and white scans. Hone in the proper workflow for black and white scanning, and I guarantee you'll be able to hit successful scans every single time.